When going through legendary United captains, it's criminal that this man is often overlooked in favour of more recent examples. But anyone who saw Roger Byrne lead his players out and how they responded to him on the pitch could plainly see that this was a captain every bit as inspirational as Martin Buchan, Brian Robson or Roy Keane. Possessing a great football brain, he was hard in the tackle and even as a defender knew where the goal was. This club captain had already led the babes to the cusp of reaching new heights, but then he, along with seven other flowers of Manchester, were cruelly taken from us. Let us remember with pride and never forget Roger Byrne. Roger Byrne was born in Gorton, East Manchester on the 8th of September 1929. This town was one of the tougher places to live in this great city, and it's that upbringing as much as anything else that shaped his personality early on, turning him into a no-nonsense tough character who wasn't afraid of standing up for himself or voicing his opinion to anyone. Roger wasn't the biggest of players, and was a definite late bloomer as far as football was concerned. He didn't go via the same route as a lot of United seniors would do at that time, through the youth setup as an apprentice under the guidance of Jimmy Murphy. He would play for his youth club, Ryder Brown in Gorton, until he was spotted. Roger was the epitome of leadership. What he said was fully respected by all the players, his grit, charisma, focus and determination garnering their admiration. Byrne was a right-footed player who liked to play on the left and did so in a variety of positions including wing half and outside left but ended up as a world-class fullback. Despite him excelling in his position, Roger apparently wasn't the best tackler in the world but the opposition knew they'd been in a battle with him afterwards. He never went in half-heartedly. He had tremendous speed, both physically and mentally, was as hard as nails and had a steely quality about him. He also had a terrific work rate and was an innovator. He was up and down the field all game and even supported the attacks from his fullback position, a revolutionary tactical decision to take in the 1950s. The Mancunian's football intelligence and ability to read the game was well respected, but was also overly opinionated and he had no compulsion to hold back on previous captain Alan B. Chilton, a big man, telling him in no uncertain terms what he thought, even with Busby himself. In former teammate John Doherty's The Insider's Guide to Manchester United, he tells of a story of when, during a training session at the cliff, Busby shouted something to Byrne, and Byrne told him to F off. By lunchtime, the skipper was on the transfer list, and was only removed once the boss had received an apology. Roger Byrne was signed by his boyhood team after he was spotted by legendary United Chief Scout Joe Armstrong at the aforementioned Ryder Brown Youth Club in 1949. He was 20 years old. After some time at the club, he was finding it hard to break into the side, always turning out in the reserves. But fortune smiled on the Gorton lad when an injury crisis befell the squad for an upcoming game against Liverpool at Anfield. With three players out, Byrne was pressed into action, making his debut alongside fellow debutant Jackie Blanchflower on the 24th of November 1951 in a 0-0 draw. United were involved in a title running with champion Spurs in the 51-52 season. Yes, it was that long ago. And after back-to-back -back defeats, Busby wanted to change things around. To take advantage of his pace, he stuck Roger out on the left. It worked a treat. He knew where the goal was, scoring seven goals in six games, and United took the title by four points. Despite the glorious heroics, eventually Byrne declared to the boss his unhappiness in the position and Busby was compelled to move him back to left back. Roger had won his first winner's medal and followed it up with a 1952 Charity Shield victory over Newcastle, where he was still employed on the left wing and scored on the day. With Alan B. Chilton moving on in 1955, Roger, who had been vice-captain since the 53-54 season, took over the responsibility. The time between the first post-war United title and Burns' captaincy was one of transition, with the youngsters soon to be called the Busby Babes, taking over from the old guard, who'd been gradually moved out of the club since the start of the decade. Roger, who was several years older than the talented clutch of young boys, including Duncan Edwards, David Pegg, Bobby Charlton, Bill Fulkes, Dennis Vile, I could go on for a while, was a terrific guiding hand. He also became a protector and enforcer at times if any of the opposition wanted to take advantage of the young babe's youthfulness or naivety. Roger would sort them out. His contribution in his first season as club skipper cannot be underestimated as he led the side to the first division title, this time by 11 points over Blackpool, the only club who came near. In the following season, the Mancunian was at the fore of an unprecedented club feat, back-to-back -back league titles, again over Spurs, but with an even greater points haul. He even led his side out at Wembley for the FA Cup final, and a shot at the elusive double. However, after some unsavoury tactics from the Villa forward Peter McParland, essentially reducing United to 10 men for much of the game, after an unpunished assault on keeper Ray Wood, United narrowly lost out 2-1. There was some scant consolation as Roger picked up his fourth trophy as captain, his third Charity Shield win, 4-0 over the Cup winners. 
Since winning the league in the 1955-56 season, Matt Busby had defied the FA in Football League's wishes and had entered the UEFA European Cup, which had had its inaugural tournament the season before. United had given a good account of themselves in their first foray into the competition, bowing out in the semi-final to reigning champions Real Madrid, who would go on to retain that trophy in the final that year. With United's retention of their first division title in 1957, United entered the competition for the 57-58 European Cup campaign. The Busby Babes had a little trouble navigating their way to the quarter-finals of the competition, but Red Star Belgrade would prove to be sterner opponents. After a narrow 2-1 win in Manchester, the boys set off to finish the job behind the Iron Curtain. On the 5th of February 1958, Roger led out the Busby Babes for the last time. United raced into a 3-0 lead with an opener from Dennis Violet and a brace from Bobby Charlton. Three down at half-time, the resilient Red Star side pulled the game back to 3-all, but the Red Devils held on to progress to the semi-finals, 4-3 on aggregate. On the following day, the 6th of February 1958, the chartered flight home to Manchester landed in Munich to refuel. The weather in West Germany was poor, with heavy snow, but the side were keen to get back. British European Airways Flight 609 tried to take off twice from Munich in deteriorating conditions, but both times, for technical reasons, they were aborted. With a deep sense of foreboding, all the passengers boarded the Airbus for a third time. Due to the slush on the runway that had built up over the time the plane had been standing there waiting to take off, the aircraft couldn't build up enough velocity to get the required lift to become airborne, and instead skidded through to the end of the runway, smashing into a house that was beyond. Roger's lifeless body was found by survivor Harry Gregg, who was searching the wreckage trying to save survivors. He died instantly, along with most of the other fatalities, both players, non-playing staff, flight crew, journalists and others. 23 in all were lost. Unbeknownst to Roger was that wife Joy was pregnant with his son, but hadn't had the knowledge at the time or opportunity to tell her husband. Roger Jr. was born eight months later. Roger Byrne had played 280 matches for Manchester United, scoring 20 goals. He rarely missed a game and had won three First Division titles and three charity shields. Amongst all the club successes, Roger Byrne was recognised internationally, appearing for England from his debut, a 40 victory over Scotland in 1954, in 33 consecutive matches until his untimely death at Munich four years later. This run is a record that still stands to this day. The Mancunian also appeared in all of England's games in the 54 FIFA World Cup Finals in Switzerland, as the three lines topped their group before bowing out in the quarter-finals 4-2 against Uruguay. Had Munich not happened, with Roger Byrne, Duncan Edwards and Tommy Taylor as automatic starters who were also missing, the England World Cup Challenge in 1958 could have been a victorious one. England had beaten eventual champions Brazil 4-2 in 1956, as well as defending World Cup champions West Germany, home and away in the same period. Additionally, with England captain Billy Wright on the verge of retiring, Roger was widely acknowledged that he would become his successor. Sadly, it wasn't to be. Roger Byrne was an undoubted great as a player, and especially as a club captain. Respected, successful, led by example, and leaving us at just 28, he had so much more to achieve. What do you make of Roger Byrne and what does he mean to you? Please comment below and like, share and subscribe. Thank you as always for your support.